Hello everyone and welcome to the latest Frankcast Premier Match. I'm your host, Little Dan, and this week I've got an absolute hero to the modern new faithful, uh, top goal scorer in our League One season, one one third of the most electrifying strike forces that we've had in Wolves in recent years. I've got Nua Dicko. How are you doing, Nua? Hi guys, I'm doing good. Uh, thanks. Thanks for inviting me. It's been a while. I've been following you on social media. Uh, so it's nice to see you today and have the chance to, to have a chat with you. Thanks, nice. we're obviously in Turkey now, um, playing for the Zion Tef, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Yourself and Roderick Miranda are on the back of a 1-0 win last night. Um, how are you finding life over there compared to your time in England? Well, well, it's completely different here than uh, in England, as you can guess. Uh, to be honest, it was a nice surprise, you know, as football is it's pretty good here. And so I enjoyed it, you know, the football and the life here also. And uh, yeah, you know, because of the pandemic, etc., I haven't had the chance to really enjoy, um, you know, the, the full... Uh, um the full aspect of life here because you know it's a good country it's a very nice country and they have uh, also really nice fans like like in england so that's the bit uh, of a pity but um, so far it's going it's going good it's good yeah. good um let's take you back quite a few years now you made your debut uh for Wolves back in i think it was 2012 13 maybe um, under Dean Saunders, mm -hmm. um, the, the season that we got relegated, um, you scored your, your first goal at the Wolves against Burnley. Um, do you remember that day uh, very well in regards to off the Wolves lost that day, but fans uh, were pretty angry on the pitch afterwards. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I'd forgotten that. <laughs> Yeah, it was a crazy, it was a crazy day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, it, it was just like, you know, when I first arrived at, at Wolves, I remember I had gone to shoot, uh, to Blackpool Unknown prior to that. And I remember coming to Wolves and just realizing how big of a club it was as soon as I arrived, you know. And it was such a pity that, you know, things were not going well at, at the time for, for the clubs. You know, like uh, Wolves, I think it was, uh, this season got relegated from Premier League, so they were in championship. And I think the, um, can you hear me pro good? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I think that this year, uh, the club wanted to go uh, back to the Premier League and it went completely wrong for some reason. And um, yeah, I arrived to the to the club. I saw that um, you know how big it was. Uh, unfortunately, my time at, when I arrived it wasn't you know it wasn't a good fit, let's say, or a good match. You know things were not right at the club, and I was also a very young kid uh, at the time also. And uh, and yeah, you know. It's, I remember the game, you know, and the fans were really angry, you know, and it was normal also, you know, you can understand. But yeah, this, this time, this period of, um, uh, of, uh, of my career and for Wolves wasn't uh, the best, I guess, yeah. So then you skip, you skip a couple of years, you're playing for Rotherham against Wolves in League One. And I think he caused our defence quite a few problems that day at Rotherham. I think we drew three all and you got two for Rotherham. Remember that? Yes, yes, yes. I remember this, this game, yeah. So compared to that moment and when it was sort of kicking off against Burnley, did you have any sort of concerns going back to Wolves on the back of that period when you were on loan? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I remember at the time I was talking to some of, uh, of my family and um, I, I remember saying, before I got I go back to work uh, I said to, to one of 
I don't know if it was my brother at the time, I said something like, oh, I know my time at Wolves wasn't good at this time, but I feel like I'm going to go back there because I have a good, I still have a good feelings about, about this club. And uh, if I have the chance to go back, I would go back. I remember saying this. And uh, a few weeks later, I was a Wolves player. Yeah. And obviously, you, you, you never really look back in those sort of 12 to 18 months from Son in the January. I think you finished top goal scorer in, in League One. And then um, the Championship season on the return, we just missed out on the playoffs uh, by a goal difference, I think. But a lot of fans will put that down to that November period yeah. where you were injured and we didn't win a game. Oh, yeah, 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 this period. Uh, to be honest, um, looking back at it, uh, I think, uh, like, I thought also that maybe the fact that I missed this period didn't help us um, to, to reach at least the playoff, because I think we had the team to do at least the playoff or maybe more this season it was it was a great season and uh it's so that even now sometimes i still think about uh, this november month that i missed and i'm like okay i think if i don't miss this this month i'm pretty sure we uh, we, we would be at least in the playoff this season positive i mentioned earlier you were part of that that electric front three yourself, Bakri Sako and um, Benny Kofova. We had so much momentum going into those last few weeks of the season. Obviously, we missed yourself in um, in November. You scored some important goals. Um, do you remember back sort of the, the Friday night game on the television versus Derby? I remember the atmosphere being quite special that night. Um, what's your sort of favourite memories looking back on Wolves? Oh, I have I have a lot, you know. Uh, one game in particularly, I think it was in League One against Rotherham, the six-four game. Uh, that day was amazing, you know. Uh, for as you know, this this game I scored a hat trick, so it was really special for me. And I remember everybody was in a good mood. The atmosphere was just top uh, at the club. The fans, the players were, uh, you know, way back to the championship. It was a really nice day. Um, after another game, it was Leeds at home. Uh, this 4-3 game. Uh, it was a pretty similar game than this Rotherham game, if if I remember. Just a beautiful day, sunny day. Uh, I remember, I think if we win this game, we, we go back, we go in the playoffs spots you know um places something like this it was such an important game for for our season and um and yeah it was a, it was a nice day you know the front three Afobe, Sako, and me uh we had a really good day i remember david was came and gave us the 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 win in the last minute or something like this in the last five minutes or something like this if i'm correct yeah, yeah, yeah this uh, probably my two favorite games. I, I have others, but these two were yeah. really special. You have some very special games. The Leeds one does stand out. A lot of people sort of um, question you for the one goal, why you took it um, so soon instead of taking it into the box. I think you discussed that many times before. But your other goal with the left foot from such a tight angle, but that was quite a nice finish as well, looking back. Oh yeah, uh, you're talking about the Leeds game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember? Uh, uh, to be honest, I remember that day. Like, Benny tried to shoot, and it ended oh, up like a cross. Was pace, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, and then it it ended up like a cross, and I remember not thinking too much at the time. Like, the ball is coming. I see the goalkeeper is arriving to me. Also, I know the angle is is tight and it's very difficult to score. And I'm just like, okay, I think I just need to to make contact with the ball, a good contact, make 
sure is on target. And fortunately for me, the ball is like bounced off a little bit of the ground. It goes over the goalkeeper and it went in and uh, it just set up the day for set up my myself for the game really well also because it was such an important game and I remember we were one nil down after maybe the first 15 minutes if I can remember correctly and uh, yeah it was just a nice day and this season when Benic arrived it just clicked between him and me and it was such a joy for myself to play alongside him you had Sako also you had um you have you, you had James Henry also, but the difference for me was Benick. Yeah, I really enjoyed playing with him. Okay, yeah, special special life to between yourself, um, Benick and, and back. You also had some special games beating Liverpool away in the FA Cup as well. For you, played the majority of that game the two one at Anfield. Uh, what did you say, sir? I didn't hear you correctly. Liverpool in the FA Cup, you played in that fixture as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Player. Yeah, that was a very special day, you know, like it was my first time playing against uh, Liverpool at Anfield also. They had the team at the time, not the team that they had last season, but they still have some impressive players, impressive names. And I remember, like, the fans, the whole song that traveled to Liverpool, it was just amazing, you know, going out for for warm-up and you see all the fans already there, you know, like, it was just a typical special like, fake-up day and away day also for the, for the fans and for, for, the, for the players. And I remember the, the manager was Lambert at the time, and... It was just like, guys, just go enjoy, enjoy it, you know. Just give everything, play with confidence, and that's what we tried to do. And we were lucky at the time, and the Costa was just like unstoppable. Nobody could stop him, and uh, he played an amazing, an amazing game. And in the end, we we managed to to win that game. And the Veyman scored also. It was such, you know, was such a a nice day for for the fans, for the club, and from for the players also. You know, this kind of memories are are, are for life. And uh, Stearman also scored. I think we won two one. Stears and Veyman scored, and I remember Costa on the Veyman goal. I think he did like a rush from uh, 50 meters, and yeah, it was just um, a nice day. Probably a, a, a silly question to ask: Did did Kenny Jacket get the best out of you? Um, yes, he did. You know, uh, it really helped me reach another uh, level. You know, he, he believed in me, and you know, which is the most important thing for, for a player, you know, like you can have all the quality you have if you're somewhere you don't feel like really confident as a football player, you're not really gonna perform and if you don't perform, you cannot enjoy and you cannot improve also. It's really difficult. And yeah, Kenny Jacket really believed in me and he helped me a lot. And even Wolves as a, as a club also get the best of me, you know, at the, at the time. And it was just um, a nice time of my career and of my life and something I won't, uh, I won't forget, for sure. Not many people will know this, but you were the first Wolves player to score under Nuno Espirito Santo in a fixture. It was during our uh, 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 season. A lot of people think it was Leo Bonatini, but it was yourself. What, what were your sort of um, short memories of working under Nuno? And um, let's just ask you, was it yourself who asked for the move or were you told that we needed the money to bring in players? What was the situation behind that? Uh, working under Nuno was like, was 
good because like you could tell he was a great manager he was really something different from the manager i had seen prior to that at all you know i remember coming into preseason uh really fit really up for it i knew was, you had a new manager the season before I, it was my season coming back from this injury it was quite difficult and you know i remember coming um, I had worked a lot in the summer to come back uh, to make a good impression of the manager, etc. To because all I wanted really was to stay at Wolves. And, um, yeah, the preseason went really well for me. I think I had some great games, on some some goals. Uh, this one against um, Werder Bremen, uh, I think against Victoria Pleasant also. I don't know if I said correctly. So the preseason went really well for me. I thought that, uh, you know, I had shown that I could, I was still there to, to help the team uh, go to the Premier League. So to answer your question, no, I never asked to, to leave Wolves. No, never. I, I, I was seeing myself at Wolves for a long time, to be honest. And um, despite that preseason, uh Nuno never really I don't know if it's him or somebody else, never really uh how to say this in English. Uh I was never really in his plan, you know. I think yeah. even you though the precision went done, well. You you couldn't have done much more than what you intended to do. Obviously you had a good preseason. You scored against Hull City away under Nuno, so theoretically you couldn't have done any more. You were just never really in his plans, which was unfortunate for yourself. Yes, that's that's what happened, really. And uh, yeah, as I said, I, I didn't want to leave because I knew this team was gonna go, was was gonna get promoted. Like I had no doubt about it, you know. And uh, so yeah, I wanted to stay, but in the end, like. Hull City needed a striker. Sorry, I cut it here. Uh, Hull City needed a striker, and um, the offer came in. The offer came in, and um, uh, Wolves accepted. And I was like, you know what? If the club don't want me, they count on me. And I think they needed the money to find another transfer for another player at the time, and. Um, yeah, I was like, okay, maybe it's my time to go. And I wasn't happy to leave Wolves, but I guess it was just destiny, it was just fate. And uh, obviously, I was happy also because I knew this team was going to get promoted and I was really happy at Wolves. You know, I liked everything about, about, uh, about it, about being a Wolverhampton player. And uh, but I guess it was just a time for me to move on, and then I went to Hull City. I still followed the Wolves every every week, and I was okay. I think this season they will really smash the league. That's what they did, and uh, yeah, they deserved the, to, to get promoted this season. And hopefully, it's just a start for Wolves to to get even bigger in the future also. What have you made of Wolves um, this season, Nira? Do you still think you could have led that line for us this season with the injuries that we've had up front? Why did you say sorry? Do, do you still think you could have done a job for Wolves this season with, with Ralph Jimenez being injured and now sort of second string striker to, to fall into place? Oh, uh, I guess so. <laughs> but you know, it's... Uh, it's such a pity that Wolves lost um, uh, Jimenez because he's such a massive player for for the club, and you have seen it when he was. In. He's he's done so well for for Wolves that nobody could have replaced him, you know. Um, and I think they're really suffered uh, the fact that he was um, injured. I think he had a really serious injury to the head from what i understood and uh well 
he's good now. I think he's back. If he's played some games, but it looks like he's back uh, in trainings. But um, yeah, yeah, it's such a pity because for sure Wolves would have done better with him. Now I don't know if they would finish in the top six or top eight, whatever. But for sure they would have done better than with him uh, than without him. But yeah, it's been. I think it's a frustrating season for Wolves, and uh, but you know it can always it can always be worse if if you can if you can say because like you can look there is some teams like Sheffield United, uh, West Brom, and they really they really struggled this season. And Wolves, okay, it was not the best season, but it's a not all right season, I guess you know. Obviously, I, I'm sure the club would have wanted to to get some European football, etc. But like I said, it can always be worse. Hopefully, next season will be a better one. Things could definitely be worse. Mira, we could be in the Championship, heading towards League One with fans angry on the pitch again, like against Burnley, like we mentioned earlier. Um, yes. Wolves have got West Brom on Monday. Yes. Um, local rivals. I don't think you played against West Brom for what about you played West Brom all during your time. Do you remember much of the no. rivalry? Do you know how much it means to the Wolves fan base, that rivalry? Yeah, it was... That's one of the things I didn't have the chance to, to enjoy, you know, this to play in this local derby. Uh, how do you call it again? I forget. Um, the Black Country Derby. What did you say? I didn't hear yeah. you. Country derby? Yes, the Black Country Derby, yes. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have the chance to, to, to play it in it, but um, from what I saw on on social media, it looks like an electric uh, derby. And uh, yeah, I'm sure the, this. Would I play home or, or away? Away. No way. Anyways, there's no fans, but you know, it's just. Um, I remember I was at sitting at home all the time in the FA Cup. You know, I was thinking, I hope we get to West Brom in the cup. I hope we we get West Brom at home because the the South Bank will be bouncing. It will be such an amazing um, uh, day if we play uh, West Brom. But no, I didn't have the chance to to play in it. Hopefully. Uh, Wolves will do well against, against uh, West Brom. You know, derbies are always special, you know. And uh, hopefully they get the three points and the fans will be happy. All right. So, just going to do a quick fire quiz of you now. Just quick questions, sweet to come up with whatever answers. Um, who was your best mate while you were at Wolves? Who was your best friend at Wolves? Oh, I think you already know the, the answer. Uh, it was uh, Bakasako, but I was also close to to also other players. You had uh, Big, uh, you had uh, Doc Dirty, uh, Van Lapa, I, was, uh, I was quite close to. Ella Kobe one? What did you say? George Ella Kobe one? Uh, Ella Kobe, yes, Ella Kobe. Yes, 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 Elokobi. Uh, I had a few, you know, like Kevin McDonald. I always thought he was the funniest guy I've met in football. Uh, the also was really funny. Um, yeah, there, there were a few. Costa, Capito, Boli, for the short time also I was there with him. You know, I, I've had the chance to meet some really nice people uh, when I was at Wolves. Even like the... People working at the club were so so nice. Um, yourself, Bakri Sako, and Benica Thorbay with the celebration. Who who was the best dancer at the three of you three? Oof. Uh, between Sako and Afobe because I'm the worst <laughs> of the three. Uh, I would say probably Sako. But Benic is good. Benic is good. That's of course probably the best. If um Bakri Sako, you if, if you weren't travelling with Bakri Sako to an away fixture, who would have been the worst person to room with? 
<laughs> the worst person. Um, at the time, I would say George Savile. <laughs> what? Just uh, silly, immature, or w weird? Oh, he's just silly. He's a very nice guy. Very nice guy, George Savile. But he's just crazy. too much crazy for me. Right. You would do something out of the blue, you don't expect them, you're like, is it serious or something? It was, it was a nice guy. Right, and then the last question is, who is your favourite out of Cristiano Ronaldo and Leonardo Messi? My favourite? Yeah. Oh, really, I don't have favourite between the two. I think they are both great. I just try to enjoy as much as I can of them too. And, before they retire. <laughs> if Benny, if Benny Afobi wasn't playing at front with you, which one of those two would you want with you? What did you say? If Benny Afobi wouldn't have been fit, which of those two players would you have wanted playing next to you? I would say, uh, <laughs> that's a tough one. <laughs> Well, I'm putting it on you. I need to have uh, every other guest this season, and I'm asking you as well. Uh, you are allowed to say Cristiano Ronaldo. I would Ronaldo. say probably Messi. No. No, Everyone's I would say probably Messi. <laughs> okay. Uh, Nua, thank you for, for spending your time. I really appreciate you giving us your time today. Um, I know it's been difficult for sure, but. As always, just thank you for, for your time and hopefully we'll get you back on in the future. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for inviting me. It was nice to talk about my lovely time at Wolves. Also, one quick question. What's happened to the blonde hair? I like that. No, it was just for a few weeks. I think he'll be back soon also. Don't worry. <laughs> it will be, be back soon. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.